Cheeky boy. Come on then. Hi folks, welcome along to the vlog. Uh, chances upstairs, let me just adjust this, I do it every time. Chances upstairs because today we've been brewing and yesterday we also brewed a beer but I didn't pick the camera up yesterday but I have today, that's right because today we're actually going to be playing around with the uh, tilt hydrometers, yes. So I'm looking up at a screen behind you just there so a lot of you guys who are subscribed to the channel will be aware that we've got this tilt hydrometer uh, Raspberry Pi receiver and monitor set up there so just turn around again because the cooler's kicked in so basically what's happening is all the tanks have their own Raspberry Pi as fortune would have it we have eight tanks and there are eight versions of the tilt did I say Raspberry Pi then I mean tilt so there are eight versions of the tilt we have eight tanks so that's handy and I've named all the tanks after the colors black blue green pink purple yellow and red I think that's all of them um, but because we have stainless steel tanks and those tanks are insulated with rock wool and timber sometimes the signal can find it a little bit difficult to escape from the tank up to the receiver which I have up here. You see that little box up there? We've got the Raspberry Pi in that box and that's kind of equidistant. That's kind of equidistant between all eight tanks if you get where I'm coming from uh, but still some of the signals can be intermittent and we might not get a signal for an hour or two and whilst that isn't a real issue in terms of data logging to track fermentation and what have you on the spreadsheet which is ultimately where all this data ends up it's nice to have that television screen that monitor in the brewery so at a glance I can have a look and I can see where each individual beer is so I can see that I've got proof of concept in there it's sat at 19.4 degrees and the gravity is 1035 You've no idea how convenient that is when I have other things to think about. I don't have to take a sample from the tank to see where we are, etc. So let me get to the point. I have been fortunate enough to have been uh, given access to some code, which I think I can share with you. It is in the public domain. Uh, it's on uh, GitHub, I believe it's called and I think the chap who shared it with me, his name's David Gray, I don't think it's the singer um, and I'll, I will leave a link down below to the uh, to the code and this code is to be written onto an ESP32 so that can then be used as a very cheap Bluetooth signal repeater for each of the tilts and the code that he's written as well he's been expanding on it and you can actually also select which tilt you want the ESP32 to repeat so uh, I don't know if there'd be a problem with all all eight tilts broadcasting to the ESP32 or not there didn't seem to be because I've been trialing an earlier version of the code on one of these little modules uh, but either way what I've done is I've ordered from China an ESP32 for each tank and we're going to code each tank for each colour tilt that goes in there so for instance tank number six that will always have the purple tilt into it the reason why I've done that is when all eight tilts are live I'll take you down here and I'll show you something so when all eight tilts are live this is the order that they come out in black, blue, green, orange, pink purple, red and yellow. So what I've done, if we populate every single fermenter with some beer, they're all going to have a, a tilt in there ultimately. So this, at a glance, I will be able to see that FV4 is tank 4 on the monitor. And it just keeps things very, very simple for me. So um, these are the ESP32 modules. We'll take a closer look at them later on and basically 
I've written on each one what colour tilt it's going to be coded for. And we'll go upstairs and I'll just take one randomly like this purple one here and we will get stuck in to how I've coded put the put the program onto these little machines I don't know if I'm doing it a hundred percent right but it works so I think I'm getting pretty close but yeah we'll go upstairs we'll have a little bit of a play with some of the software that is required for this and uh, we'll put the um, program on this ESP32 with the software. Also I've got some other little DC to DC book converters I believe they're called which uh, were left over from another project but they are like 50 pence on eBay and we're going to utilize that along with these cheap 69p USB cables from Pound World or whatever it was in order to uh, tap in to the 12 volt supply that already exists on my fermenter controllers so these can live inside the control box and be powered internally with the supply that's already there instead of me having to, I don't think I've got one available but you know having to get a USB plug for each one, I don't want to be doing that. Anyway, all will be revealed throughout the video so let's go upstairs and uh, let's put some code onto this little little gizmo. Right folks, I'm in the office. I've not got the software on this computer to do a screen grab, so I'll try my best to talk you through everything that uh, is going on. So first things first, you'll want, you're going to want to browse to the code. So the code is on gist.github.com and the username is David Gray. M3MIS15 and the project is tiltrepeater.ino. So you're going to go ahead and download the zip. There's a zip file just here. We're going to download that onto our local machine to open up later on. And then also, you're going to want to go ahead and download Arduino for Windows or whatever else. Uh, it is that you're running Arduino IDE It's free go ahead and download that onto the machine and then we can get started with the whole thing So what we're going to do I know it's a busy desktop is We're going to open up uh, Arduino you can either do it through the programs file or from the downloaded uh, tilt repeater that we've got from the GitHub file, you can just open it up there and it should, all things being equal, open up onto your machine. And here it is. So this is the tilt repeater. It's called, they call it a sketch, but it is basically all the code that we're going to be interested in into putting on our little ASP32. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my ESP32 I'm going to plug it into a USB uh, making sure that this USB cable has actually got a data link inside and it's not just a charging cable and we're going to stick that into the PC and as you can see we've got a little red light that's lit up there which means that uh, we're connected so a couple of things that you might have to do in order to get this to work uh, you want to go to tools, you want to go to ES uh, to the board and you want to select the, the correct board. The correct board is the ESP32 dev module. So we've got that uh, selected. And then also you may want to open, um, let's have a look, what's it called? D -d 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 device. Device manager because we want to know what port this particular little, little dude is actually on and you can go down here into ports on device manager and you can see it'll say silicon labs cp210 blah 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 but importantly it says com3 at the end so that's the port we're in and you may have to select that port under here ports so you can see it says port com3 
as long as that's right, we're right, that was under tools. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to put this code onto here, but we want to make sure that we've got the correct colour. So along here, you can't see this I imagine because you're so far away from the screen, but trust me, it gives you, uh, David's given us instructions in the code so we know what number to put in for the colour repeater uh, to select purple and that is number four. So we're going to go ahead and change that number to four and we're just going to hit the upload button. And there we go. So down here in this bottom corner, you probably can't see this, down here it does say uh, dev module on COM3. So we've got that working fine. And whilst uh, it's deciding, it's compiling the sketch, before it uploads, it'll say searching or something like that on the screen here. And you have to press and hold the boot button on the ESP32 in order for the code to be written hard coded in, if you like. I can't think of the correct terminology to be written onto the chip. So we're just going to wait until the uh, computer basically asks us to do that, um, that step. There are other links as well online if uh, if you want a more comprehensive uh, tutorial on how to code this because I really am playing it by ear a little bit. But if you search for uh, kind of ESP32 uh, projects and what have you on the internet, there are several other websites which can kind of help you uh, program these little doodads. And I think I'll try my best to maybe leave a link or two in the description of the video should I, uh, should I remember to do that. So we're just waiting a second here. I know the green bar has gone all the way to the end, but sometimes that don't mean anything. There we go. So now it says connecting and it's got dots coming up. So now we're going to press and hold that boot button and you'll see just down there, look, it's right in the coding. And I've still got my finger on the button. And then right at the end, it says right in 2%. You can scroll down 30, 40, 60, and then it says complete hard resetting via RTS pin. So you can let go now, and we can pull the whole thing off. That has now got our tilt repeater code on it. It really is that simple. So let's go downstairs and let's see if we can hook this up to a power supply and then install it directly into our fermenter controllers. Okay, so here we are at the workbench. So I'm just gonna set up a few things first of all. Firstly, we have the soldering iron, which we're gonna need. So we'll turn that on now, get that heated up. Secondly, you can see we've already been experimenting with one here. I'm going to remove this module because we're going to install a new one. So I've got this 12 volt power supply here uh, in order for me to calibrate the power supplies that we'll be using to uh, control our ESP32s. So these little book converters are called, let me open it up and show you, they are LM2596DC to DC book converters, they're pennies on eBay, Banggood, all that kind of uh, stuff, all those websites. And the idea here for us is to attach the end of a uh, USB cable, we've already got one here to give you an idea. So this power lead is going to go to our 12 volt supply which we already have in the fermenters. I've just got one here so I can dial things in before we go that end. And then this side I've taken the micro USB off of a full length USB cable. 
I've isolated the positive and the negative rail which are the two outside cables and on this particular uh, USB cable they were all white in there apart from one lead one of them was pink and the one next to the pink closest to the pink on the outside was actually the positive lead so I just got myself a permanent marker and just coloured that in red so we can kind of see what we're working with but uh, I'm just going to pause and go and get another USB cable so we can uh, attach it and then uh, we'll get down and we'll do a bit of soldering but ultimately this book converter is going to take our 12 volt power supply bring it down to below 5 volts which is what these ESP32's want and we can just plug that in then like that and that will run uh, forevermore and I've tested it as well it draws less than kind of 20 milliamps there's very little power on these these things so let me go and get another USB cable we'll zoom down onto the table and hopefully we'll be able to do this before the alarm goes off to tell me that my whirlpool is over because I am brewing the vacant gesture at the same time right I hope I've moved that into a position where we can see what's actually going on it's a bit difficult with uh, I haven't tidied the workshop up very much really so we've got the USB cable these are from Pound World they're 69p and they're three meters long really it's a bit of overkill but never mind we've got a bit of extra cable should we need it so all I'm going to do is slice off the bit that I need and then we're going to cut down the edge of the cable just here I knew I'd be straight out of shot before we've even started anything there we go, how's that? So let's go down the edge of these two outside cables. Try not to damage the inner cable as we do so. I'm really finding this difficult to keep in shot. There we go, I think we started it at least. So let's just stretch this back, both sides, so we can see what we're working with. So there we go, that's not bad at all. So we can see that here we have four white, well three white and one pink internal cable. If I can just get that one out. And then there is another one hiding in there but that doesn't really matter because we're not going to need him what we ultimately need to do is identify the positive and the negative rail so there we go we can see what we've got now I just strip away all the scrap all the scrap plastic insulation like so so four cables, so we've got white, pink, white, white. We know that this one next to the pink on this particular USB cable is the five volt rail. So we're gonna color that in like so. The two internal ones, the pink and the second white, we don't need. So we're just gonna cut them out like that. And then we've got basically a live or a, a five volt and a ground rail so I'm just gonna strip a little bit of the insulation back on these two and then we're gonna twist the strands together a touch and now I want to bring in a little bit of extra cable that we've got sat to one side just a little bit of um, normal, I think it's 0.75 mil. you could use thinner, uh, just electrical cable and what we're going to do with these two little fellas is we're going to weld them on, or solder should I say, solder them on to the input side of our 
book converter. So we've got an input side here, I know I was out of shot, of positive and negative. Remember we are still using DC. So what I'm gonna do is just tin the ends of these bits of cable here. Just like that. There's one. And here is two. I might sound like I'm rushing a little bit because I am aware that uh, the Whirlpool's going to be finished very soon on the brew that we've got going. And then also what I'm going to do on the, uh, the little book converter is there are four pads, obviously for positive in, positive out, and negative in, negative out. So I'm just going to flow a little bit of solder onto all four of these pads like this just so we've got something that we can connect to in a moment there we go and then we're going to make sure we've got the right end in and we want in positive we'll just flow that connection on there like so There we go, and then the same with the negative rail. Bit of a crunch. There we go, that's worked nicely. And then on the other side, because these wires are so small I didn't really need to tin them last time. So we're going to make sure we've got the polarity the right way around. We're going to put the positive onto the positive and then we're going to put the negative indeed onto the negative this is the output finding it a little bit tricky oh you bugger come on now I just need to be able to hold that onto there without absolutely making a hash of it. There we go, that's got it. So there we go, so we've got 12 volts effectively coming in on one side of the book converter and then we've got our friendly 5 volt uh, mini USB connector on the other side. Now what we need to do is we need to regulate the voltage on this book converter so just to the side here we have got a 12 volt power supply so let's get connected to that positive and negative uh, let's zoom out so you can see what we're doing so there we go that's the positive in the correct terminal the negative in the same and then we're going to power the whole thing up with the cliff quick test. So there we go. So that's now powered up, as you can see, and with the light, let me just turn this off, with the light showing at one side there of the power supply unit or the book converter. So what we will need to do now is turn it down. So if I just set the multimeter to DC, you'll be able to see that we have got, coming out of the book converter, we've got 12.6 volts DC, and going into the book converter, we've also got 12.7 volts DC. So we need to bring that DC voltage down and fortunately for us, if I can get these two prongs to stay there like that, that's not working very well. How's that? There's a little bit of a potentiometer, I think is the right term, on the top here. 
there we go and you can see it falling now took a bit of winding but the ESP 32s don't want anything over 5 volts really so to be on the safe side we're going to wind this down to 3.94 volts that will be happy there like that and then when we plug our ESP32 in then we're not going to blow the board there we go so now we have 12 volts coming in to our little book converter 4 volts coming out to our ESP32 now this whole shebang this whole setup if I take it out is ready to go directly into the fermenters so we already have a 12 volt power supply not as big as that one there but we already have a small LED power supply 12 volts inside the control units in order to actuate the valves for the glycol so the amount of power that these little things take which is effectively nothing uh, we can just kind of piggyback off the back of those modules in order to get the repeater to work for us so I'm going to go and start the transfer for the beer because it is time and then we're going to come back in a moment maybe with background sound effects of beer being transferred and we're going to uh, we're going to hardwire purple into position so this is the inside of the brewery control boxes you know at one point I did have a schematic for this but I don't know where I've put it but if you go to my channel and search uh, fermentation control or something similar then you will be able to find a schematic for this so uh, here on the back if you can see that is a 12 volt power supply module so we're going to pop these cables back in because this cable here controls the uh, actuates the valve and of course we know now that this cable is controlling our ESP32 so I think we've got them two in the right hole so we'll tighten them down it's pretty solid to me and then we'll get the other cable the other wire and we'll pop that in I should maybe have got some long nose pliers for this job in hindsight but we seem to be getting by just fine so that's now in we'll stick the negative cable in as well that doesn't want to go this isn't ideal as I say I'd have probably been better off taking these blocks out and then maybe adapting them putting a Wago on or something like that but we'll see how it goes if it nips it and it has then that's good enough for me right so then what I'm going to do is I've got a glue gun plugged in down here there we go a rapid glue gun and I'm going to splurge a load of glue onto the back wall of this uh, box and then I'm going to stick the power supply module just to the back just like that it really is no airs or graces here we're just going to stick it up stick it right up and then the same thing for the ESP32 I'm just going to find a place on the side of the uh, side of the control box here I'm going to run a couple of beads of glue and I'm just going to stick those uh, pins straight into that glue and we're going to stick the ESP32 on the side of the box like that that really is it folks if you want to have a peek inside you can see we've got the ESP32 on the back wall there 
we've got the uh, power, the book converter just up at the top and then all of the other switching mechanisms in here for it to work. So now all we need to do is close this bad boy, as you can see it's got purple on it. And then once this fermenter is full of beer, which is not going to be long, quite frankly. So once that fermenter is full of beer, then we'll drop our tilt in there and we'll see if indeed it sends a signal up to the TV screen or the monitor, as they should be called, I think. So I thought it might be wise to show you exactly what we've got powering or calling that FV there. So that is this Maxi 310 chiller down here. He's at 9.4 degrees, but he'll get to minus five in no time at all. Come on, Chancey boy, out of the way. And then on the front, I thought I'd better just show you it all illuminated. So, as you can see, we have power to the ESP32. We have power to the, obviously, to the book converter. Everything's working as it should in there. That's not a problem. Uh, but the STC's off. Well, that's because it's turned off. That's no bother either. And you can see that we're going into the fermenter at 21 degrees. So it's 21.1. Let's have a quick look at the transfer over here. It says 23 on there. There'll be a degree or two of discrepancy, obviously. We we'll just keep an eye on that. But yeah, it's all working, so... Well, it's all illuminated. Uh, and it's all stuck up like I want it to be onto the boards. So I'm going to go and close this box up now and we'll get the purple tilt out and see just how it's going to perform. Transfer complete and yes indeed we have the purple tilt broadcasting. So I think the numbers might be a little bit out. 1033, 1034 that's looking better. It should be around uh, 1035, 1036 for the vacant but it could just be hung up on the side for the minute. So time will tell, we'll leave that in there and hopefully it'll settle out later on. One thing I can notice on the tilt though is that the signal is being updated every three or four seconds which means it's got really good uh, Bluetooth connection and looking up there at the moment uh, minus 74 dBm which I'm guessing is millidecibels or something like that uh, Basically, if it gets to minus 95 or above, it tends to drop the signal. So in the minus 70s is a good signal. So I think that that repeater is absolutely doing its job. So there we go. I'm going to cut the video here because otherwise it's going to end up being extremely long. I hope all the information that you need to get yourself set up with one of these cheap and affordable repeaters is in either the video or the description below. If you've got any questions, you can leave them in the comments, but I can't guarantee I'll answer them because I'm flying by the seat of my pants with this project as well. It just seems to have worked because of the network of support that we've got out there on YouTube. But uh, yeah, if, uh, if Mr. Gray is about and he wants to leave a comment below uh, with regards to his program code, then uh, you're more than welcome to do so, sir, and I'll point them your way uh, so they can go and download this coding to put on your own ESP32. There we go, that's it. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.